We're back. Time for another edition of the Carolina Insider. It's a rapid reactions edition after Carolina takes down Duke 93-84 in the Smith Center tonight. Our rapid reactions video pods, as always, presented by our good friends at Modelo, an official beer of the Tar Heels. I'm Jones. He's Adam. And Adam, this was a pretty complete victory for Carolina. The, the, it's a nine-point win. But this was a game. Duke scored the first two points. Then Carolina scored on its next two possessions to lead four to two, and the Heels never trailed again. And, and really led this game in, in the first half. It kind of lived in that six to eight point range. Then it was a ten point halftime lead. In the second half, it kind of lived in the eight to thirteen point range, where Carolina just controlled this game. And I talked to Hubert Davis afterwards. Adam talked to Harrison Ingram. You'll see those and hear those in a minute. One thing Coach Davis said was that he felt it was the most complete performance of the year for his team, and hard to disagree. It, it was There were great moments in every facet for Carolina. Yeah, it was hard for Duke to make a push because Carolina was so proficient at scoring in so many different ways. If yeah. it wasn't Harrison Ingram hitting one of his five threes, it was the Tar Heels throwing the ball down to Armando Baycott and Armando having, a, as Coach Davis tells you, one of his best games as a Tar Heel. So Carolina wins at 93-84, and to that point, just some of these individual numbers. Baycott, 25 points, 10 rebounds, 5 assists. He is the first Tar Heel, and only the second Tar Heel ever, and the first since Charles Scott in 1970 to put up that stat line against Duke. So you're talking all-time great here. Ingram with his best scoring output as a Tar Heel with 21 points and 13 rebounds. He was uber efficient, 8 of 12 from the field, 5 of 9 from three. You also had R.J. Davis, not R.J.'s best night, yet you look down there and he still finishes with 17 points and five assists, no turnovers. Carolina only had five turnovers as a team. And Seth Trimble gave Carolina a huge boost off the bench. Ten points, two boards, two assists, a steal, and really good defense. And that's not the... Elliot Cadeau had nice moments. Cormac Ryan had some big plays. It it was a team win. Yeah, it really was. And on a night when the Tarrells thinned out the bench a little bit. Yeah. Uh, got a basket from Jalen Withers, got a basket from Jalen Washington, and basically that's it as far as the reserves go. But the starters were really, really good. Even though Duke put up 84, I still thought Carolina was pretty good defensively. Well, I, I do think that's an interesting twist to this game, and we're going to get to our conversations in just a second. But, you know, Duke shot 50.7%, and they had 54 points in the paint. And normally those are not good numbers if you're the defense. But I left that game thinking that Carolina did achieve what it wanted to achieve defensively, and that was not to let Duke hurt them from three, not to let Duke get in transition, and to make them make difficult twos. And at times, they made they made difficult twos. Jared McCain and Filipowski and, and Roach all had some really difficult shots that they were able to make. But you'll live with that if you're Carolina, particularly as you referenced when you're being so efficient on the other side. I think the most likely way for Carolina to lose that game was Duke getting really hot from three. Yeah. And they eliminated that option, and Duke just didn't have enough. It was going to be really hard to beat Carolina from two in that game with Carolina scoring the way it was scoring, and Duke couldn't do it. And the the Tarles have been good against the three all year, and they were good enough against the three tonight. Okay, let's get to those interviews with Coach Davis. I sat down with him, and then Adam talks to Harrison Ingram. Um, you'll hear and see those. We'll come back, talk a little bit more about this one, and, and look ahead to what is a very difficult stretch still in front of the Tar Heels. But, man, what a great night in the Smith Center. Just an incredible atmosphere. In Chapel, really, all day. I mean, it's been all day. It has just been electric here. And uh, the Tar Heels win at 93-84. Let's get to those interviews. Back with more after this on the Carolina Insider. Coach Davis, of course, has uh, been wearing sport coats on the sideline this year for the Tar Heels, but he has taken it off because, Coach, that seemed like a pretty happy but a little bit of a wet celebration there in uh, in the locker room. What a terrific performance by your team tonight. I'm going to send them the dry cleaning bill. <laughs> I'm going to put that in their locker uh, tomorrow morning. But this was our best um, complete game all season. Um on both ends, I just I just thought we were locked in. I mean, we did a good job defensively without fouling. We did a good job. I mean, you know, Duke, they've got five guys that shoot over 40% from three. I thought we did a really good job contesting their threes. 
Um, they were able to get points in the paint, but I, I thought our ability not to foul and defend the three was huge for us. And then on the offensive end, like this was, it was just the balance of inside out. Um, you know, Armando was, Armando, he was big time. And, you know, th this is, it, it was great. I know Armando, I think in the last couple of weeks, has talked about, you know, taking a back seat and, you know, this is RJ's team. This is our team. And for our team to be the best that it can be, we need Armando to be Armando, RJ to be RJ, Harrison to be Harrison. And they were that tonight. And I'm just really, really happy for the team. When you and I spoke in the pregame, you said you needed Armando Baycott to be a dude for your team to be. Yeah, <laughs> I figured he was a dude tonight. What what was different in your mind about what he did? Obviously, the, the stats are better, but what, what was it that he did differently tonight? Well, I think it was all him. I, I, I felt like, he, you know, his aggressiveness uh, to get low position um, allowed him to catch the ball where he could easily, without hardly any dribbles, to be able to score. And then – an area that he has really improved on that won't show up in the stat sheet is how much better and like comfortable he is handling double teams. There was a time in his career where, I mean, he just really struggled with that. And now he, you know, he, he gets it and he's able to make like a great play out of it. Maybe not for an assist, but to a point where we can get it to somebody that can do something else. So I, I, ju I just thought, his energy, his effort, um, his aggressiveness, his ability to finish around the basket, the job that he did on Filipowski. I mean, to Filipowski's so good. He can score close to the basket from three, and he does an amazing job of getting fouled and getting to the free throw line. I thought Armando was was great on that end as well. He He had, I think this is one of his best games, obviously, ever he's played since he's been here at Carolina. Coach, I hate to just keep asking about individuals, but Harrison Ingram, 21 points, 13 rebounds, had five three-pointers in this game. And it felt like Seth Trimble had one of his better games as a Tar Heel. He did. You know, Harrison has that ability, you know, to be able to post up and handle the ball, you know, playing the small forward, power forward position. Having another guy out there that can make perimeter jump shots, that's just huge. That opens everything up for us and it makes it more – um, lanes for our drivers to get to the basket and Armando to do the work down low on the post. And then I just really so proud of Seth. You know, um, he has athleticism that allows him to do things that others can't be able, not only defensively, but his ability to attack the basket and finish above the rim. Um, his cuts after he threw the ball into the post. I, I just to me, I think this was Seth's best game as a Tar Heel, and uh, we needed it tonight, and um, I'm really, really proud of him. Just a couple more because I know you got other stuff to do. It felt like, and you mentioned this some, uh, running them off the three-point line seemed to be an important part of what you guys were trying to do tonight. They, they took just 19 threes and made only five in the ballgame. Yeah, but, you know, our defense is inside out, you know, because we want to protect the paint, and – but we require our guys to do more than just one thing. We want to protect the paint. Also, we want to, um, you know, contest the three. Where Duke gets a lot of their threes are in transition. I've talked to you before. I'm not concerned about transition because that's on us. Well, we took good shots. We made shots. We took care of the basketball. I think we only had five turnovers, and we got to the free throw line. So they're not in transition that much, and so that allowed us – to, for them to go up against a set defense and that's good news for us and bad news for them last thing it was electric in the smith center tonight yeah it was you know you could just feel it uh coming out of that tunnel i mean anytime that you know duke carolina it it there's a different feel about it but today was even a uh, just a different feel i can't remember as an assistant coach head coach where both Carolina and Duke, and maybe it was, we were one and two in the ACC and both top ten in the country. That was uh, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's been since 2019 was the last time that these two met. Us. Four, I can't remember. Four or five years. <laughs> Coach, what a bounce back from your team. I know Tuesday was disappointing, but came back, as you said, with, with one of, if not the best performance of the year. Congratulations on the big win and look forward to talking with you this upcoming week. All right, thank you very much, Jones. I appreciate it. That's Hubert Davis, guys, inside a, as you can imagine, very happy Continental Tire, Coach's Corner. Alongside a very happy Harrison Ingram, outside a very happy and very wet Tar Heel locker room. Harrison, just describe for the folks on the radio the scene in the Carolina locker room after the game. 
man. I don't even know how to explain this with my words. Um, you know, I heard a lot about the, the rivalry coming into the game. You know, I didn't, I still didn't feel it. Even when the game started, I didn't feel it. After that first bucket Mondo got, I heard the crowd. I was like, oh my, oh my goodness. You know, just getting a win with a big crowd like that in a big environment, a big game, top 10 matchup. I mean, what else can I ask for? There was a three you made in front of the Carolina bench in the second half, and it looked like you were almost just kind of floating back down the court. What? What's it like to make a shot like that in front of a crowd like that in a game like that? Um, RJ mentioned it once in one of his interviews. It feels like you're just in a playground. I mean, I was out there, and my shots were falling. Every three I shot, I feel like every shot I shot was going in. My teammates were feeding me. They are telling me to keep shooting. Coach kept calling players for me, man. I mean, it was beautiful. We're not accustomed to a Carolina Duke game being one where a team gets a double-digit lead and then pretty much just holds it the rest of the game. How are you able to establish that advantage and then hold on to it? I think that's the chips on our shoulder. I mean, after losing to Georgia Tech uh, last game, I feel like we didn't come out with the energy that we had, and we knew that this would be a big-time game, a big-time game to make a statement, a big-time game to get a big win against a really, really good team. I mean, they have a bunch of talented players, high-level players, high-level coach, and a high-level game, and we were ready. The only word on the thought for the day yesterday was trenches. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? You know, the trenches, coaches always talk about that because at the beginning of the year, we weren't rebounding well and just being in the trenches with the big boys. I mean, we're playing small ball, so boxing out, uh, getting offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds, first one to the loose ball, helping a teammate up. I mean, if, if, if I go down, if I goes down, I mean, you know what I mean? Just at the end of the day, just, you know, staying together with our teammates no matter what. Part of that fight was, as you said earlier, you hitting your three-pointers. You made five. Mm -hmm. You and R.J. Davis, the only two Tar Heels to make five in a game this year. Have you done anything with your shot this week different? What What was feeling good? No, just confidence. I, I knew it was a big game. I, I knew I, I didn't shoot well against Georgia Tech, and I knew it was just my night was coming eventually. I knew I knew I was due for a night. You know, I just stayed the course, trusted my work, uh, watched film with Marcus about the game. I knew I was get a lot of step in threes and just knocked them in. You talked this week about how much you wanted to play in this game, wanted to see what it was like. Now you've done it. What was it like? Man, that was that was something else. I seen I had so much family come in town. I probably had 100, 120 family members here. Uh, I saw a hundred of them. They're all up there an hour before the game. Yeah, the little kids yelling at me, saying hi. Just seeing those my family members, seeing all my friends, just seeing how much game this meet this game means to everybody. I mean, this this was amazing to play well, to get the dub. I mean, all glory to my teammates. All glory to his teammates. All glory to Harrison Ingram. All glory to the Tar Heels. Great day to be a Tar Heel. Harrison Ingram after Carolina beats Duke. Harrison, thank you. Yes, sir. So Carolina now improves to 10-1 and one in the ACC, bouncing back from that disappointing uh, result on Tuesday in Atlanta. Every other team has at least three losses in conference play. So the Heels have started the second half of their conference action and currently have a two-game lead in the loss column um, over the next closest competition. Adam, I did want to mention Baycott just really quickly. 25-10-5, and five, as we said. Um, he was a different player tonight than what we have seen recently. I mean, we've seen this Armando Baycott before, but not recently. And he, he was, along with Ingram, I think, as we mentioned, the, the two dominant factors tonight for Carolina. And Hubert Davis talked about it with you. I do think over the last couple of weeks, Armando's struggled a little bit to figure out his place. And it's weird to say that about a guy who's been here for half a decade. But I think he saw some other guys having success and thought, okay, maybe they don't need me as much as they did last year which is factual but as coach davis told you the tar heels still need him yeah. and and that version of him it, it makes the tar heels really 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 hard to guard and, and nice moment after the game as the, carolina was going back down the tunnel and just happened to be sitting there as armando and hubert davis were going towards the tar heel locker room and hubert davis turned around and realized baycott was standing there and just gave him this big giant hug and they both just looked so one, tired, yeah. but two, happy. And just shows how much goes into something like this. Really good quote there from Coach Davis. It's not RJ's team. It's not Armando's team. It's our team. Mm. Oh, like, yeah. Like that. Maybe see that on yeah, a Lucas oh, yeah. column coming soon. As soon as he said that, I got so happy. I thought, <laughs> oh, okay, we're done. Um, okay, quickly, and we appreciate you being with us, but it's always fun when Carolina beats Duke, so I know we'll go a little longer. Um, Clemson on Tuesday, at Miami on Saturday, at Syracuse after that. I mean, this back half of the ACC schedule is tough. Carolina feels great right now, as it should, but a lot of work still to do. Clemson's going to be desperate. Yeah, they need, the a, they need a big Tuesday. win. That, that's a huge game. If you can just get that one and maintain the momentum from this one, but it's going to be really hard because people are going to be telling the Tar Heels how good they are. This team, though, this team feels like it can manage that. I, it just – 
it feels like. So we'll see. They didn't let Tuesday bring them down too much, came back with uh, their best performance of the year, at least according to the head coach, so I guess we'll believe him. Um, so the Tar Heels win at 93-84. Again, they are now a couple games clear in the ACC. What a terrific night in the Smith Center. Thanks for being with us. It's a Rapid Reactions edition of the Carolina Insider presented by Modelo. 